My name is Christy Powell. You're watching the Atheist Experience from the Atheist Community of Austin live here in the Free Thought Library, where I myself have been volunteering alongside my good friend Jamie Boone for nearly six years. In that time, we've had a lot to say about the six or seven so-called clobber verses, lines from Leviticus and 1 Timothy calling homosexuality an abomination or comparing it to murder. Today, though, I want to talk to you about something seemingly a little more near and dear to God's heart, fashion and fabric. Depending on who you ask, 39 different times the Bible lays out instructions not on who you may love, but on which materials you may wear, uh, including this one from Leviticus 19.19 stating, Keep my decrees. Do not mate different kinds of animals. Do not plant your fields with two kinds of seeds. Do not wear clothing woven from two kinds of materials. So, check your tags, avoid your poly blends, and ask yourself, if I've spent more time worrying about these six or seven clobber verses than I do about eating broccolini or wearing lycra spandex, does that make me pious? Or does that make me an asshole? Not convinced? You can reach Jamie and I at 512-991-9242, so give us a call, because the show is coming right now. All right, yeah, welcome everybody to the Free Thought Library here in Austin, Texas. Today is April 7th, 2024, very possibly our last day on Earth before the Forever. total eclipse destroys everything. I am your host, Christy Powell, and joining me today is my good dear friend, Jamie Boone. Yes, a boon to the show indeed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. we are here in the Free Thought Library in front of a live studio audience. Thank you all so much for being here. Jamie, the energy is so fun and exciting when we yes, actually get is. to do all of this yes. uh, here in person. We've got some great calls in the line. Who are you hoping to talk to today? What are you looking to get out of this conversation well, today? I am too lazy now to research the random new conspiracy theories that come up, but I always enjoy having them explained to me. <laughs> so I kind of want at least one Eclipse conspiracy caller because I've heard quite a bit. Uh, everything from uh, the Illuminati thinks it's significant to the Biden administration is going to get your children uh, to, uh, I don't even know. I don't know. C call in and tell me. Tell me your what, best. Yeah, I know no, that I'm excited I, I to know hear. that I should be afraid of something. What <laughs> is it? Tell me what I should fear. Uh, if only there was a cable news network to let me know what I should be upset <laughs> about. about. Ah, yes, but, all uh, the time. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do our best to debunk these conspiracies uh, because our job as the atheist experience uh, is to be a product of the atheist community of Austin, a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the promotion of atheism, critical thinking, secular humanism, and the separation of religion and government. But before we get started on that mission today, uh, we want to go over the results of last week's Share Your Experience question of the week. Last week we asked you, why is Satan competing for God's followers? Our number three favorite answer came from Wigamus. Satan wants God's followers because he makes original content. All God does is repost. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Our number two favorite answer came from John 947. Satan is competing for God's followers because he wants to be the next big sin fluencer. Uh, oh, thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love these groans when they're live yeah, in yeah. studio. Yeah. It's so much better than <laughs> groaning alone at home. That yeah, is yeah. the community part mm -hmm. of the atheist community of Austin. I am fed by that hate. I dig it. Uh, our favorite answer this week came from QC, who says that Satan is competing for God's followers because the complaints from his followers got him demonized. Oh, yes. yeah. And you yeah. were complaining about the puns I had oh, before man. the show. Yeah, yes. yeah. It, it does yeah. already feel like a Jamie Boone show in so hey, many ways. Hey, I've hey, been hey, doing yes. ten times the talking, and, and yet and your yet. energy is here. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love that we're yeah. here doing this. All right. Well, so our prompt for this week is missing from the Sermon of the Mount. Blessed are the blank. Jamie. 
Missing from the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the who? I'm not sure my answer is broadcastable. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Uh... Ble- uh, blessed are the are the, uh, oh, the uh, it's not this isn't secular sexuality so I'm not sure how much of this I can say. I mean, out go loud. for it. Let's do it. Uh, are the we'll say the generous in spirit. Or the, the, uh, <laughs> Christian the translation in of what I'm of thinking of. Body. Yes. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, the, I uh, the I'm, generous of 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 head. I don't know. <laughs> the generous of head. Uh, well, I'm anxious to hear what our audience comes up with. Uh, make sure to leave your thoughts, your answers in the comments section. Give us the best answer you've got. Tune in next week to see our top three. And uh, with that, I suppose, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Yeah. Talk to uh, Caleb in Ohio. Caleb, what you got for us today? Hi, so uh, I know that you guys are... Uh Hi, my name is Caleb, by the way, as you guys uh, heard. But uh, I was wondering, because I know this is the literally the atheist experience, so you guys are atheists. Um, and I was wondering, like, so do you believe that there, or not believe, but do you guys think that there's, like, no evidence for God? You know, it comes down to that question of what is evidence. Yeah. I, I, I don't like to play word games here. I will absolutely say that if you have some meaningful, emotional experience, and you feel like God speaks to you in your heart, I am not going to say that that's not evidence for God. I'm just going to say that that's not good evidence, that that's not scientific evidence. I don't find it particularly compelling. Like, if there is a, you know, paw print in my backyard, is that evidence of a Sasquatch? Possibly, but it's not very good yeah, evidence. It's yeah. much more likely able to be explained through more rigorous scientific ways. So mm-hmm. I, I hope that answers your question in a sincere way. I'm not going to say that there's no evidence for God. I am going to say that I have never seen evidence that is uh, meaningfully compelling and that stands up to any amount of scientific rigor. It, does that yeah. work for you, Jamie? Yeah, that's that's pretty much that's about what I would say. I'd say is I haven't seen sufficient sufficient evidence to persuade me. Otherwise, I I wouldn't still be an atheist. And like uh, Christy was alluding to, I think there's things that are consistent with a world with God, like there being a footprint in the backyard is consistent with a Sasquatch leaving it. But if the footprint looks like a squirrel or looks like another creature before concluding what that left that footprint, I'd want to find the creature. So, for example, when people go, oh, but this person was healed, how can you say it's anything else than God? I don't know why I'm going to faith healing here. Right, you, give, me, give me a reason to believe, and then I will believe. But I haven't had sufficient reason. I mean, what about, I mean, I know you guys have heard these arguments probably about a bajillion times. That's not even a real lay, number. Lay them on. Them. We're, yeah. we're hoping that for the, a new yeah. one, we're helping to yeah. uh, understand it better, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What, what makes you yeah, believe like in me. God? What is your evidence for God, mm-hmm. and why does it move you? Why does it compel you to believe uh, that there is an all-powerful God? Well, I think that the different things like the cosmological argument, the teleological argument, and the moral argument are pretty good convincing arguments. Mm. Because, I mean, literally, like, I mean, there is Christians who do believe the Big Bang happened. There are some Christians who don't. Whether it happened or not, I don't think it make or breaks Christianity, and I actually think it's pretty good evidence for um, God. That sure. sorry that that uh, the observable universe uh, began with a Big Bang is part of your evidence uh, for the existence of a God. Just to clarify. Well, yeah, because literally um, there was a point. Um, when everything, the Big Bang Theory says that there was a point when everything in the universe was compact down to a point that was so small, like even Stephen Hawking, I mean, not that I agree with everything he has to say, I mean, he's a smart guy, though, he's like, he even said, he was asked, what was there before the Big Bang? There was nothing. And um, you couldn't say the universe came about naturally, the Big Bang happened naturally, because there was no natural law, there wasn't nature or anything like that. And so I feel like, and I'm not just placing God in there, but if we observe that matter and like just stuff like that doesn't just appear out of nowhere okay then i feel like it's not just asserting god inserting god in there just to say oh there's evidence for god you know and then there's like 
Sorry to, sorry to jump like in here just real quick because the cosmology of it, what you've just described when they talk about there being nothing and then there being matter and energy is matter and energy coming out of a state where there wasn't matter and energy. Right, so the universe being different than being a, a four-dimensional space with uh, matter and energy is what occurred. So it, it is kind of inserting God in there to say, oh, well, that's where God goes because we don't know where it is. It just sort of feels like an extension of the God of the gaps argument, right? So people that can do math beyond I, what I can and that have observed cosmology beyond what I have have uh, made observations and calculations back to the, the Planck time after the Big Bang and their description of it, they use the word nothing, meaning not matter and energy, but there are things there the way that the common usage of the word thing would describe. So there was something there that isn't matter and energy, and it, it, in a rapid expansion event that's well beyond my ability to explain better than this, then you get the observable universe that has matter and energy in it. But uh, trying to so link you, an event that occurred more than uh, 13 billion years ago to the specific lives of a specific species of mammals on a specific planet on one arm of one galaxy in an ever-expanding universe um, uh, seems to be placing a significant amount of importance on human beings that the universe doesn't suggest. It seems more reasonable to me to believe How does the that... Not suggest it? Sorry? How does you said the universe does not suggest? How does it not? That that I'm sorry, the universe doesn't suggest that. You talk about human beings if, and how well, okay, concentrates it, on human beings. It, it literally, literally not at the. Yeah, I don't think that the universe focuses on human beings, given that um, the vast majority of the universe is inhospitable to human beings, and the vast majority of history has been devoid of human beings. And uh, a majority of the places on Earth are not habitable for human beings. We can't live in the ocean without significant technology. But then again, it's like, well, while I was talking about like the Big Bang and stuff like that, there are some Christians who, like including yeah. me, who don't believe the universe is old, really. Oh, are you, the sorry, sure. are you, uh, you believe the universe is young? Yes. Okay. That, I, just, I just wanted to clarify. I wasn't trying to be snarky with my tone, although that is usually what I do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, okay, so I think we're, I've, I've now gotten lost on what the point was, but I, I think you understand where I'm well, coming from in to, terms of, to, um, yeah. Well, I was talking about the universe, and I was talking about how I feel like that the universe having a beginning, and there being a point where there was like no time, space, or matter, because like Einstein, I'm pretty sure, yeah, general relativity says that those things ought to come into existence at the same time. And um, I was talking about how I feel like that that is good evidence for God, considering there's also other arguments like the teleological argument, like the fine-tuning design of the universe and the existence of objective moral values, which is the moral right. argument. So they kind of okay. like connect so to each other. I, I have a couple. I don't of know that how that. well they all yeah. connect to each other, and yeah. it does feel like we're kind of taking on this smorgasbord rather than yeah. really addressing anything that would be particularly compelling. So I, I'd like to maybe narrow it down a little bit, unless you can give me a little more to try and graph those things together. But, but Jamie, I feel like you had a point yeah, that I interrupted. I was going to say, so um, the universe having a beginning is consistent with every story that says the universe began, which is true for Hinduism and Islam and a story about a universe created by a council of pixies. So how can it possibly be evidence for your religion if it's consistent with... Uh, every reli most religious explanations for the universe and also explanations for the universe that don't have that. I mean, the Bible also says that rocks exist, and so the existence of rocks is consistent with the Bible, but it's also consistent with geology and Hinduism. So the universe has a beginning isn't compelling evidence for me that uh, one way or the other, really, uh, about the, the Christian explanation for the beginning of the universe. Well, you mentioned um, other religions, mm -hmm. like that. The existence of other religions doesn't prove anything. 
No, it doesn't. But no, it doesn't. Sorry, I, I don't think I'm, 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 I didn't make my point uh, clearly. You're right. The existence of another religion doesn't prove or disprove any one religion. But um, the universe having a beginning is consistent with the stories of Christianity and Islam and Hinduism. And a whole, I'm not a, I'm not a, a, I may be an atheist, but I'm not a religious expert. Um, and, and there's thousands of religions and most of them say the universe began. And so is the beginning, the fact that the universe began evidence that Hinduism is correct? I would say it's not. And I would say it's also not evidence that the Christian explanation is correct. Does that make sense? Oh, did he drop out? You know, yeah, I believe oh. we've lost Caleb. So uh, if we can get that sorted, Caleb, we eclipse. would love to speak to you. Yeah, it's, it's the, let's go ahead and eclipse. blame it all on the eclipse. I think that's probably yes. the best, really the only explanation really? for any of I mean, this. Uh, what else could it be? Sure. Well, while we're sorting that out and uh, everything yeah. else, I do yeah. want to remind people to visit tiny.cc slash AEN podcast, where you can listen to a podcast form of the Atheist Experience Talk, Heathen Truth, Wanted, the Nonprofits, Secular Sexuality, as well as a number of other, other fine programs from the Atheist Community of Austin. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to encourage people here at the beginning of the show uh, to send us a Super Chat. We'll read as many as we possibly can. We've got a few coming in, and we uh, will say damn near anything you ask us to. Please take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, and finally, I want to say a big thank you to the crew who put this show together every week, particularly when we are live here in studio, as well as being scattered around the country. So many hardworking people to make all this happen. So thank you all so much for that. And uh, yeah, with that, let's uh, talk to... Oh, I think we might have Caleb back. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, well, let's uh, let's touch base with Caleb quickly and, and see if we can get this call back on track. Uh, Caleb, what can you tell us? Where do we leave off? Okay, well, I, I won't be able to be on here very long. No, I can't be on here very long. And so just pretty much I'm going to get to the point really quick. So I just right. wanted to ask, what evidence would it take for you guys to believe that a God exists or that specifically Christianity is true? And really quick, I was just mentioning also before I um, got cut off that uh, – the existence of other religions, just because there's a majority, or there's a, yeah, there's a vast, not majority, sorry, oh, just yeah. because there's a vast expanse of religions doesn't mean that one of them couldn't be true. And yeah. I was just also asking what kind of evidence you would need to, sh to believe God exists. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Um, I think uh, you, you got cut off, and I didn't realize you'd gotten cut off, and then I kept talking, which, again, you know, that's my usual MO. <laughs> but... Um, what I was uh, what I was trying to say is not that the existence of other religions weakens uh, the the claims of Christianity. It's that the uh, universe having a beginning. That observation is equally strong evidence for Hinduism and Buddhism, and Islam and Christianity and Judaism, and uh, Shintoism and a number of other religions. So saying, well, the universe had a beginning, therefore the Christian explanation for the beginning of the universe is more likely. I'd say, well, no, it's not strong evidence for that. It's something that's consistent with 10,000 possible explanations, including Big Bang cosmology. No, re no religion yeah. at all. No religion yeah. at all. Right, sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, you were saying what evidence would it take? It's, it's difficult to, to pinpoint because the claims of... The epistemological claims of, of Christianity are very specific um, and outlandish. But if uh, Jesus appeared to me here now, would be great. <laughs> um, I can't I can't necessarily expect that. But if he did, then the explanations would be there was something going on in my mind, or uh, there really is God. It's a very difficult claim to prove, and that's why uh, so far in my life I haven't heard anyone demonstrate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to any evidence, and I'll, I'll say we uh, we get asked this question. I feel like yeah, Jamie and I is. sat here yeah. in studio we answering this question we in, in the last couple of yeah. months. So uh, I I am open to anything. I don't want to be narrow about it. I don't yeah. want to say, unless this happens, I refuse, yeah. because... 
I am open to being convinced. It just keeps not happening. And so, yeah, it does depend a little bit on what the claim is. Is the claim that there is a God that exists? Okay, well, how are we defining God? And, you know, if we start to get into a particular religion or, or whatever else, and we start making these claims about a all-powerful, loving God who is desperate to have a relationship with me and who uh, weeps over the notion of being separated from me for all eternity because I refuse to accept him, then my standard for that God would be show up. Yeah. Like, come and talk to me. Have a conversation with me. You're all powerful. I know from the Christian Bible that you have no problem hardening people's hearts and preventing them from turning to you. Why not soften mine? I'm Mm -hmm. available. I've made myself available for much of my life. I was in desperate supplication that God would show up, and I in many times convinced myself that he had. And then I started to study psychology, and I started to study hypnosis, and I started to understand a little bit about neurology and the human mind and human experience, and I began to recognize that there are probably simpler more scientifically uh, rigorous ways of understanding those experiences. And I would like for an all-powerful God to show me something himself, to show me something where that's not the case. Yeah. So I, I don't want to define it by limiting it. I just want to say that well, it needs to make sense. It needs to be compelling. It needs to perhaps make a novel prediction about the future. It needs to perhaps be able to be understood with a little bit of scientific rigor. Mm. Because even if a bur- bush burst into flames in front of me and started speaking, I have to acknowledge that there are plenty of natural explanations for what could be causing that experience. A lot of them have to do with me not being particularly trusting of my own mind. So yeah. I, I would love to believe in God, and if he truly is all-loving and all-powerful, I would have to believe that he's willing to, that he's able to make that happen. The fact that he's not willing to does confuse me. So, you know, ball's in his court, I suppose. You say you say he's not um, sorry. You say he's not willing to, but there's a <clears throat> the, <clears throat> sorry. There's two things I want to say to you. That is, for one thing, even if, especially from like what you're saying, there could be other reasons why I could be seen what I'd be seen. So it's like even if you, even if God did reveal Himself, whether that be a dream or show right in front of you right now in 30 seconds during this show. Please, if it happened on air, that would be so helpful be for all of us. Cool. I mean, how, think yeah. about think about how many literally billions of souls could be saved if yeah. God showed up in this room on this broadcast right now. I mean, we are a relatively small corner of YouTube, a relatively small corner yeah. of the entire internet. But, but if Jesus showed up, if he would he be showed the up right only now, corner of the internet. Such a ratings bonanza. I mean, <laughs> sweep yeah. weeks. Like, it I, well, would be fantastic. <laughs> And I swear to you, I would do everything I could. I would like and yeah. subscribe. I would, I would yeah. share across would like my social media platforms. Like I would become yeah. an acolyte for that God yeah. were he willing to show up. And I, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be incredulous about it. I appreciate that there are arguments for why God wouldn't want to do that. We don't need to get into all of them here and now. I have to say those arguments are not compelling for me. To me, the most rational reason Mm -hmm. for why God has not yet interrupted this speech that I'm making is because he doesn't exist, but perhaps he does, and I am open to evidence that he does exist. Mm -hmm. I just, I've seen evidence, as we discussed at the beginning, but nothing compelling, nothing good, no good evidence. Yeah. Well, what is good evidence against God? Like, what is something like... I mean, I know you'd probably So it's it's a little bit like someone telling me that there's this man and he wants to have a, a personal relationship with me and he's all powerful and all loving, but he won't pick up the phone and call me. And at a certain point, I have to believe, girl, he ain't interested in me if he ain't reaching out. <laughs> like, I, he... I, I, really quick, you said the... Sorry? Really quick, you said the Bible would have to make predictions or something like that, like accurately no, or something like that? No, novel predictions multiple- about the of future. So there's the prophecies in Daniel, and we can have a, a conversation about that, but uh, the prophecies in Daniel are not specific. 
Additionally, they were fulfilled by people that were aware of them. They're not specific to a, a particular day. So when people now, for example, uh, the uh, Westphalian proph prophecy of uh, the, the end of days in the 1800s was very specific. That's, that's a prophecy that would be impressive. The world is going to end on X day. And then when on that day... The trumpets sound and Gabriel blows his horn and the uh, various, what is it, there's scorpion beasts. There's lots of stuff that's supposed to happen during the rapture. I don't remember it all off the top Do of my you? head. That happening on a specific day? Okay, that's a prediction. But there being ancient uh, Jewish prophecies, basically, that Jewish people say have not come to pass yet, that Christian people say have come to pass, is not more impressive to me than any of the other false prophets, forgive me for saying it that way, but any of the other prophets throughout human history that have made claims of, oh, they're coming for us, right? When um, the, uh, in, in Waco, the... Branch Davidians the Branch is what you're Davidians, referring to? Yes, yeah. he made a pr prophecy that uh, they're coming for us and it's all going to end in fire. And then uh, the uh, law enforcement showed up and it all ended in fire. Is that a fulfilled divine prophecy or the branch davidians correct i don't think so i think that it was a, a splintered religious group that probably falls into the classification of a cult that predicted successfully that if they stockpiled a bunch of guns the texas law enforcement was not going to take a, a keen eye on that and um might very well do some yeah. questionable things. Well, now I, I, I don't want to find myself stumbling into whether or not that <laughs> law enforcement response was justified, yeah. which is not. <laughs> but um, the, the 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 problem is if it tells me something I don't already know, right? So a prediction of hey, uh, empires will rise and fall is always true. But if it explained, for example, if God provided a quantum theory of gravity and then just boom, the whole. Uh, uh, Universe is explained in a single moment by a re-emerging Jesus that appears and lays this out. Uh, he's still going to have a lot of explaining to do for all of the atrocities that he's evidently either made happen or allowed to happen to millions of human beings over thousands of generations that are absolutely atrocious. But no, that would be very persuasive that he was God. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Okay, well, I just wanted to say that really quick. Um, you were talking about the Bible making it. Okay, so really quick, do you believe that a man named Jesus existed? I mean, I dated a man named Jesus, but I, I uh, so I know that at least one existed. But sure, I, I, I'll grant the, I'll grant the historical Jesus. Yeah, I believe there was a Jesus. Yeah, I mean, like whether you believe he performed miracles or he really rose or whether he was just some crazy guy, just like, do you, like I was just wondering if you believe that Jesus existed. But anyway, so. Mm. In Isaiah, which is the Old Testament, um, bear with me here. So this is Isaiah 9-7. It says, it mentions, and so I know at the beginning you guys might think, what do you mean anybody could do this? But I'm just saying, it says, like, of the greatness, uh, it says, um, it mentions, oh, wait, so never mind. It's Isaiah 9-6-7. It says, mm -hmm. for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And then, this is verse 7, what I'm saying. Of the greatness of his gover of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. And so you see, they're talking about like Jesus right there. And so it's talking about like David because like historically, you can see like from documents stuff like that. Like because like if even, you believe David was a real person too, right? You might not believe that like he just had. Uh, okay, I'm belief, I'm waiting right? for the I'm part though where Jesus is, is has the government on, on his shoulders. shoulders. Like that prediction raining. hasn't come true. Yeah, and I, I don't mean to pile on, but what about Jesus's own prediction that he would return within a generation and before his disciples would even have an opportunity to spread the gospel across the region? That prediction did not come true. So if we're ranking uh, like, uh, well, this could have been, but this would, but did, did, uh, none yeah. of it is meaningfully compelling. Yeah. And we've gotten pretty far from the start of your call, which just does seem to be a little bit of a grab bag of like, but, but, but why don't you guys get it? Yeah. We don't get it because if you start to take any one of the planks in this argument and evaluate them specifically, 
they they all fall apart. And when you just throw a, a whole bunch of them at us, yeah, it takes a little bit longer and it's a little bit more confusing to pick them apart. But it doesn't actually change the individual ingredients in this stew you're cooking. Okay, so at the beginning of my call, I, I'm gonna, I guess, uh. I've been on here for a little while. I don't know how okay. much longer you guys are going to have me. Uh, at the beginning of my call, I was just simply mentioning that um, I was talking about the beginning of the universe. And I was talking yeah. about, like, like I myself am unsure about whether what I believe about the Big Bang. Um, of course, like I said, I am a young Earth creationist, stuff like that. And I was just mentioning how even Stephen Hawking was saying that before the Big Bang, there was nothing, and we don't see nothing create things just like like we don't see things appear out of like thin air and so like that. I, for you to quote saying, stephen hawking in that there. way it feels pretty off base for me we're so, more than overly generalizing and summarizing so, uh, jamie please yeah so i was gonna say so stephen hawking i i um, would would put money down would have said that before the big bang there was nothing but he wouldn't have then continued with we don't see nothing creating things because I didn't think cos- that cosmology- that. I added my own thing. Yes, that. except, I yes, but so here's that, the, here's, well, yes, hold on, hold on, but Caleb, here's the problem is what he is saying is what we saw is a universe without energy and matter and space, and we don't have an explanation for how it occurred. And when you say, well, we don't see nothing creating things, well, by the definition of the word nothing that he's using in that sentence, you've never seen nothing. We have mm-hmm. one nothing that we have observed, and it's the nothing that existed before the Big Bang. So the only time we've ever witnessed nothing, it created the universe. So 100% of the observable nothings that we have were immediately before the creation of the universe. So I think, yes, th- this did come from nothing in the sense of Big Bang cosmology. But I can only defend that as well as I understand it, and I can't even do calculus. So. We're 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 going to reach the end of uh, my ability to supply an answer here. I think. How does that sit with you, Caleb? How does what sound? Like I heard what you're saying. Yeah, but the well, I mean, we, there isn't nothing now, right? There's things. There's uh, four dimensional space time and matter energy. The sun an eclipse tomorrow. Even your vacuum has things in it. What he's trying to explain is Is that that we don't have a nothing nothing available to us to experiment with and observe in the sense of Hawking's nothingness. Yeah, so when you say we don't see nothing creating things, well, we do. We've only seen one nothing. And it created, and it created the things. Yeah, and it created, I'm using your quotes here, sure. the universe. Like it preceded I feel like it's- the universe as we are. But now, it's in, in our lifetimes, in the last uh, 14 and a half billion years, there's been something. Yeah, we'll have to disagree with that part right there. Well, I mean, yeah, uh, no, sorry, that, that's they, fine. The, the timeline, we, yeah. But I, 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 I guess what I'd like to either. ask of yeah. you, Caleb, is to uh, pick one. You know, to, yeah. to pick one idea, to, yeah. to not call us and say, well, I think this is compelling, I think this is compelling, I think this well, is compelling, and then let us pick each one apart in these sort of casual ways that maybe catch you off guard. Like, pick one piece of evidence. I was trying to give you guys evidence. evidence. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I hear you, Caleb. I'm trying to explain what I would like for you to do. It's a request. You don't have to honor it. But what I would like for you to do is to go home and find the one reason. You want to get into the teleological argument? You want to get yeah. into the moral argument? Pick one. Become an expert on it. Like, mm-hmm. like read up. Like, learn all of these things. Don't sort of vaguely quote the notion of Stephen Hawking's, but get into, if not his direct work, if you don't have a background for it, Develop that background. Become as much of an expert as you're comfortable and capable of becoming on any one of these subjects, and then really drill down on it and give us a call back and show us how even one of these arguments is overwhelming, and let us be overwhelmed. We would love for you to convince us, but you need to maybe specialize a little bit more rather than Mm. just throwing a bunch at us and hoping that some of it will stick or that we won't be able to bat it all down as fast as it's coming. 
So I, I think I'm going to wrap it up there, yeah. but I really do appreciate you giving yeah. us a call. I understand why it's so important to, to express some of these ideas. I thank you for trying to explore them with us. And I would just ask you to maybe familiarize yourself with any one of those arguments as much as you can and to, to hit us up in the future. And I'll just um, add real quick b before you go, Caleb. I, I do appreciate you uh, trying to find more than one avenue. I guess I, I differ from my co-host there a little bit. I think what he's getting at in terms of the discussion is can we go uh, further into depth on uh, the one topic or, or the other topic or the other topic. But I do appreciate you uh, doing some of the legwork to, to get that on. And I, you know, I'd be happy to take your call again. All right. All right. Happy Eclipse. Oops. Enjoy the rest yes. of your weekend. Thank you so much. Yeah. That is assuming it doesn't all end Yeah, tomorrow. right. You know, our, our weekend forever. Okay. Before that joke sits too long, let's talk to <laughs> uh, Yatmus. Uh, Yatmus in Florida. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Talk to me. What's on your mind? You know, from a, I'm an agnostic. I've been an agnostic since about eight mm -hmm. days. Sure. And, uh, you know, I, I've heard arguments on either side, no evidence, no science evidence on the atheist side and all kinds of things. And then on the theist side, of course, you, as you well know, what you were just talking about in the previous call, I just... From my perspective, and I'll give you this analogy or metaphor. I see, from my perspective, we're, as humans, we're in a position of an ant to a human. All right, uh, yeah, Miss, I, I'd, I'd love to better understand you. I need you to help me out with the quality of your of your phone call. Yeah, there, you, you need to sit still or maybe hold the cl phone closer to your voice. Love you to walk me through these arguments, but I need to hear what you're saying a little more clearly. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of what sounds like wind in the background, um, and the it's death of a now. cyber bird there. That squeak, I think, is what that is. Hey. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that Can you? you hear me better now? Yeah. Can you hear me better now? Much Good. more clear. Okay, so, um, so oh, I, I was Did I was you... outside. I took a walk to the oh, local okay. convenience store, but um, see. From my perspective, okay, us to God is the equivalent of an ant to us. Can an ant define us? Either? No. Can an ant maybe dimly perceive us, but they can't know the depth of what a human is. How are we expected as humans to deduce and somehow scientifically evidence got that that's one issue I'd like to get in with y'all. How are we seeking evidence for God when we can't even map but twenty five percent of our own ocean floors with this inept science? Sure. So I'd say that science isn't inept. It's mapped twenty five percent of the ocean floor, which is twenty five percent more than was mapped before there was science. But look, and see, like saying it's I'm inept, saying. it hasn't found this thing that we don't have evidence for, I think is, is missing somewhat the point. Before I conclude that God exists, I need evidence there is. You know, I'm not going to convict a man before he goes to court. And in the court of is God guilty of existing, the defense attorney is pointing out that there isn't sufficient evidence to find him guilty of existence. And before uh, there's sufficient evidence to find him guilty of existing, then my verdict is going to come back not guilty of existing. It doesn't mean that I can conclude necessarily that he is innocent of existing. It just means that everywhere investigators and prosecutors have looked, that every time throughout history, or at least the, what I've been able to be exposed to and find myself, of people presenting arguments and presenting evidence for God, it's come up short. So for the same reason that I How don't believe... How come up short? Well, because I have not been presented with evidence that's compelling for the existence of a god, not like the god that was so described to me. Has to, hold up. Evidence has to have a um, adjective added, or it's got to be compelling evidence. I've never heard that. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, 
Yeah, I mean, some evidence is better than other evidence, right, depending on the claim, right? Like, if I wanted evidence of whether or not, evidence you know... better than other evidence. I haven't heard that in science. It's either evidence or not evidence. So I don't know about that. It's, does the scientific method talk about compelling evidence? Well, the, the scientific... I think all evidence would be compelling. I, I, let me perhaps evidence, explain it this way. Uh, yeah, yes, please. If, if, if I go, I, I, I've already played with this earlier, so let's play with it a little bit more. If I go into my backyard and I see in the mud these scratch marks, these like big giant scratch marks, and my kid comes and tells me there was a Yeti, there was this giant Yeti in our yard and he left these giant scratch marks and he holds up these scratch marks as evidence... Sure. Okay. If there was a Yeti in my yard, perhaps these scratch marks are evidence that he was here. But I'm not calling it compelling proof because I think it's much more likely that those scratch marks in the mud came from a rake, came from my kid uh, playing a trick on me, came from some other creature that I know to exist and to be likely found in my yard. And piece of evidence is just evidence. It's not a story. It's not proof. Evidence is just a thing that we then try to understand and form into a narrative by maybe grouping it with other bits of items. But to suggest that we, like, if there's a piece of evidence, then it must be true, just feels to really misunderstand the, the core concept of how we f- postulate ideas, of how we form theories and evaluate them. Well, I mean, science collects evidence. And first off, there's no burden of proof on the scientific method. It just seeks evidence. I mean, the scientific method is all about proving and, or rather disproving null hypothesis. So I I think that you maybe need to reevaluate your notions and understandings of the scientific method. Mm -hmm. Uh, I could try to walk you through a little bit more of this. And and Jamie, if you'd like to, we can. But I I think we may be as deep into this conversation as we can go. No, Uh, no. All right. I'll I'll hold on for for just a second. Please go. All right. All right. right. Now, look. Look, you're talking about hypotheses that are introduced to science without evidence, for example. I, I was just, I'm a fucker. No, I'm good. Hello? I, okay. th- I think that may be as far as we want to take yeah, this one, I mean, Jamie. Are you ready? I'll, I'll follow your lead. Okay. There, well, uh, lead. yeah, Miss, we, we really do appreciate your time. Yeah, Let me ask you, call, you to maybe evaluate some of yeah. these concepts uh, a little bit more thoroughly, and we can talk yeah. about them more in the future. Uh, but for now, how would you feel about talking to AJ in Minnesota? Yeah, uh, yeah let's do it. Cool. All right. AJ, uh, what kind of questions do you have us for uh, have for us today? Hey, uh, thank you guys for letting me be on the show. I appreciate it. Um, well, the question I had was, um, I, I was, I'm an ex-Muslim, and, you know, I've had family members that have, like, converted to Christianity, and their excuse have always been Christianity is better than Islam, and that's never my point. It's always about if it being true. And the problem is, um, when I look at the con- – like when I was reading like um, the Gospels yesterday and I was reading specifically when it comes to Jesus' death, mm-hmm. um, they all oh, yeah. have different events with his death. Yeah. And, like one of them has him getting stabbed. The other one has him – like two of them have him screaming. The other one has him drinking wine and then saying it's done and then dying. So it's like they're all – and then one of them has an earthquake right after he dies. The other one has no earthquake. The other one – like it's, it's such different events mm-hmm. and I don't understand. Like I wanted to ask. Uh, I know you got as like when you guys were believers, what was like the excuse you guys used to like justify it being like it being true, like at that time? When I was a believer, I didn't study the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's pat, and I don't mean yeah. to be uh, overly care- careless about saying this, but they like to say that the road to atheism is paved with Bibles that have been read 
cover to cover. Yeah. You know, when I was in high school and I first started to have real doubts, it was because I, as a good God-fearing Christian who really wanted to show up for my Lord, who wanted to do what I was supposed to do, I started reading a chronological Bible. It was a Bible that had been arranged ostensibly in the specific order of events from beginning to end, which meant that in a number of places, you would read a couple of verses from this book and then a couple of verses from another book and see some of those stories oh, that were in really parallel. Good. I've never heard of that, and that is a fantastic publication. It seems like a puts, perfect it, way. Then you don't have the rest of the Gospel of Luke to get through before you move on. To, yes. to then come yeah. back to it later and yeah. then, yeah, get mixed up it's in somebody else's story. The Bible. Yeah. Okay. And, and I will say, going through that process, I mean, you see just numerical differences. You know, yeah. uh, did David right. have 10,000 men or 1,000 men? I, I don't want to try and quote specifics, but I would say that that definitely throws out for me, mm-hmm. no question, the inerrancy of the Word of God. There's mm-hmm. no way for the Bible to be perfect and the 100% absolutely accurate word of God, if it is full of all of these, like, maybe you can call them minor, but these disagreements and these things that just don't fit. So speaking for myself at that time, I really just sort of shut it out and tried not to think about it. I think that's probably a lot of people's experiences, but others will say Uh that the Bible can be, quote, true without being completely Accurate in, in the same sense that I can tell a story about my day and forget a detail and still have it be a true story, even if there are bits yeah. and pieces that maybe I got somebody's name wrong. It's still a true story. Yeah. So it's still an accurate, you know, description of your day. Maybe there was uh, an earthquake. Maybe there wasn't. They're both true. Right. Yeah. So if we're holding uh, a perfect God who wants to communicate to us and draw us towards Him to a higher standard, as we perhaps should, it does become really problematic. Uh, I, I don't want to... I don't want to create a bad faith argument by suggesting that all Christians believe that the Bible is inerrant, but I was definitely raised to be. And as soon as I had to grapple with the fact that perhaps it wasn't, that perhaps the Bible actually required a certain amount of interpretation or faith or grace, I started to realize that that makes it identical to every other book. And if I'm going to put it on the same shelf as every other book in the library, I can find some much better books in basically every library. That that was my experience. Uh, Jamie, does that line up for you? It does. Most books that you can find are better written, at least in a library. Although the Book of Mormon is, uh, you know, and so it came to pass in there enough that it's not a better book in that sense of the word. Um, but yeah, no, uh, basically that. It's, it, com- it came to a point where, for me, I never really looked into the specific, you know, metaphysical or epistemological claims of the Bible um, until I became interested in them, and then that's what made me an atheist. So I, p- part of it is I was a, a Christian for as long as I was because no one asked me to think about it. Um, I don't understand that. Jamie, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know. What, what were you going to say? My, no, I was just going to add on a couple. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, my deconversion ahead. story is boring. It lasts 11 days, and then it's done. No, no, no. I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I oh, apologize. Yeah. Oh, you're good. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, actually. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Well, so I, I didn't really question it that much. I found, like, uh, in uh, high school, I found this old... An old to, you know, notebook that I had in high school that had me writing out a prayer that I would pass a test. And that was sort of weird for me because I didn't really think that I prayed that much or spent that much time uh, focused on um, God. And then when I saw a couple clips of this show, actually, I thought about it. And then I spent basically 11 days studying and looking at like, okay, well, why would I believe what the Bible has to say or what a theological claim is. And at the end of it, I was like, okay, well, I can't conclude that. I, I'm an atheist. On the, on, and on the 11th day, he deconverted. Um, and then I went back and I read the Bible and I went, oh, shit. If I'd read this years ago, I would have been out. 
Because what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many talking animals do you need in a story before you realize that it's not literally right. true? <laughs> and also, uh, yeah. one thing I wanted to ask is when you guys were talking about Christians that I have friends that honestly look at the Bible and say, yeah, a lot in the Bible is wrong and it makes no sense. And uh, a lot of them are Catholics. They'll go, yeah, but my, you know, God is still true. And I'm like, well, isn't this the base of it? You know, and that's, that's one of the reasons why, like, for me, because of, like, like, you know, the Bible not making sense. You know, obviously the Genesis story, Jesus' prediction, like you guys mentioned, about how he's coming. And before he even said that, he said that stars are going to fall from the sky. And if somebody's actually all-knowing, they would know the size of a star that isn't, like, yeah. even the smallest stars are still bigger than the Earth. And, you know, and uh, when I was younger, I was an, uh, a younger Earth creationist, at least the Islamic version of that. And oh. being in college, I, I study a lot of biology. I do zoology this semester. And sometimes when I talk to um, some of my relatives, I don't know if you guys experience this, they tell me not to have faith in men when it comes to evolution. And I, yeah. I look at them, I'm yeah. like, hey, I have mistake. You learned. evolution to understand zoology. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I went to, uh, like, school trips to, uh, like, caves, and they would be explaining to us, these stalagmites grew over hundreds of thousands of years, and we would have teachers, the people who were responsible for educating me, uh, kind of, like, waving off the tour guides and being like, that's all bullshit, the Earth is only 6,000 years old. And that might be a sign that you're in a cult. You know. Like, just to <laughs> say it, that's not a good sign that your belief system stands up to any sort of academic or scientific rigor. Yeah. If you can only oh, sorry, trust didn't... the truth that comes from within the system and not without the system. Yeah. And probably that system is controlling what you think and know and believe in a way that is... Uh, I... Not a great sign. Not great. I... True. And I, I don't know if you guys have heard when I ask, like I asked my brother about this and he told me that the, the sign of Jesus coming is talking about the Pentecost, but it doesn't. And I told him, I'm like, this is multiple, this is written in multiple verse, but I'm coming. And I, I don't know, a lot, a lot of like, I understand a lot of Christians are like confirmed or whatever. They uh, have biblical confirmation of like studying the Bible. But like a lot of their excuses are the same as like Islam when a lot of them will like, take a big giant poop on Islam. And I'm like, but your arguments are the exact same. Like, the same. I don't right. like Islam, yeah. but yeah. they're the same exact arguments. If you we're going to put like, all these books on the same shelf and start to evaluate them and compare them in that way, uh, the Bible doesn't stand up super great. And uh, that's when we're comparing it to other religious texts. When we start comparing it to, you know, a geology textbook. Yeah, it, it's a concern. <laughs> so I, uh, well, I, I appreciate your call, AJ. Was there anything else that you wanted to make sure to, to highlight or that we didn't quite address here? Um, honestly, uh, I've, I've, I've addressed almost everything. Honestly, my main thing is the, I, I understand people like, uh, even when you show them something is wrong, they have this urge where they need to like believe it. And it, it, even for me, yeah. leaving my religion, uh, leaving Islam took me months of like recovering from sure. like, yeah. you know, realizing that. So I completely understand that, but thank you guys. I don't want to, yeah. Guys, and I'll, I'll just say guys, on that point, I, never, never feel bad that it took you a while. That's true for all things, religion or non-religion, right? People are in denial about things in their lives all the time. People magical denial, thinking is part of being a human. Magical thinking is part of being a human, unfortunately. People are in denial about their spouse cheating on them. People are in denial. Uh, wow. My brain just Came up with examples, but I can't say them like, out, out <laughs> loud because I'm no, like, All right. Jamie's thing. getting too honest here, I'm guys. Too, I'm getting too honest here. I was like, listen, <laughs> listen, girl, I know you love him. AXP but you after leave dark. Him. Um, the uh, <laughs> XP after dark. Sorry, we'll, we'll let you go, AJ, but uh, we're really Wait, glad that you called before in. Before you let me go, and, can I just say one more oh, thing? Oh, yeah, please. Um, one more thing I just have to say, and this is kind of my standard for realizing if something's true, something contradicts with reality, then in, in my opinion, it, it just isn't true. I feel like completely, like it's something that we view. And it's, but the problem is a lot of people make the argument of, oh no, but it is, it, it is that. It's like, what? So yeah, that's just the last thing I needed to say. But thank you guys so much. I hope, uh, I'll keep watching the show. I appreciate you guys taking the call. You guys are awesome. Uh, I appreciate all the work you guys do. And I hope you guys have a great day. Hey, you take care. Enjoy that eclipse and have yeah. a great rest of your weekend.
Uh, Jamie, we've got some other really great calls here. I, I'm going to let you pick one in a moment, but before you do, you want to hit some of these uh, super chats for yes, me here. Yes, I saw one that I want to read because Please. it's, uh, oh, oh, ha, ha, I have the power. Watch out now. He's going to do something crazy. Where is it? Okay. Super chat from Phenetic, Phenic Wolfox. Wow, I fell at the first hurdle there. Um, <laughs> get some hazelnuts. Grind them up. Add the proper ingredients like some coca. Jar it. Then call that making something from nut things. Oh, yeah. man. This is some of the worst puns we puns. have had in puns. such a puns. long puns. time. Puns. 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 Okay. Puns. Puns. <laughs> well, you keep dancing. I'm going to let people know that <laughs> yeah. Isaiah S., who's a new member, oh, gave us okay. $5, saying that at Pascal's table, the house is playing with loaded dice. Does that count as a pun? Is this just uh, more bad jokes? I, I do kind of love it, I though. I love it. I don't think, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's a good turn of phrase. Uh, g- I okay, a turn of phrase. A, sure, it's a, there we it's, go. It's a, it's a turn up phrase. It's a good <laughs> A movie. turn up phrase. Make it into some stew. Uh, Atheist Hudat gave us $5 saying happy birthday to Infidel64. Uh, he's going to hate this. Uh, Infidel64, may you be embarrassed by uh, the people who love you. Uh, Quantum Answer, t- uh, member for two years, uh, gifted the tw- uh, the Atheist Experience memberships. And uh, let's see, David Fleming gave us $1.99 saying, God went to the store to get some smokes and then never came back. Mm. Wah, wah. We've got a, a few no, more maybe, of those that we'll hit later in the show. Is him coming back? It's the heat is that what of that his is? returning <laughs> of a god-sized cigarette that's lit on its way back. Sure. Yeah, we've got a, a few more we'll hit later in the show. Please continue in with those super chats. Uh, but Jamie, who would you like to uh, speak to from the um, call queue here? I'm thinking. Let's take Terry. Uh, yeah. yeah, Terry in New York. Yeah. Uh, I This is something near to my heart. Mm-hmm. Terry, uh, why don't you tell us what's been going on with you? What's on your mind? Hey, hi. And um, first, I am thankful for this. Um, I am thankful for this place, for lack of a better way to put it, because, um, you know, I've been, been seeing Christian nationalism and fundamentalism gaining huge ground, and I'm glad to know that, there are people out there who are, you know, fighting it, fighting back with reason. Sure. Um, so, so um, I started out as a conservative Christian, mm. shocker, and then um, I kind of moved to liberal Christianity, especially over the LGBT issues and the um, the way that conservatism sees women. So, and then I opened up the rabbit hole of atheist YouTube, even though I was still in the liberal pro- uh, progressive Christianity. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then I got to a point where um, I started listening to Mormon stories and different deconver- deconstruction and deconversion. And then I thought, oh, my God. If this God exists and the way that I've been taught about him and from what I've been reading about him, I don't like him. Even if he did sure. exist, I don't like him. I hear that. So, um, so um, then I just kind of, like I've when I was a Christian, I had rapture anxiety and dreams about hell, and I'm like, okay, I don't fear Hindu hell, like Islamic hell, Jewish hell, or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, how do I bat away this indoctrination because it's kind of all around me, and even though I'm I've unpacked a lot of crap, you know, how do I kind of like get rid of this last like trinket in my hand? Sure. No, it's a it's a great question. It's an important yeah. question. I'll say that I addressed this in a little bit more length and detail than I'll do right now uh, here on this channel. If you uh, you or anybody listening wants to check out the Atheist Experience Network on YouTube, uh, there's a video called I believe the Fear of Hell is Disgusting. We have some other videos that try to specifically address this question in a handful of ways, and uh, those may be useful to get into. But I I hear you from the outset sort of saying, this isn't rational, right? Like, I don't believe in Mm -hmm. Hindu hell. I'm not losing any sleep over it. So why am I Mm -hmm. losing sleep over the Christian hell, which I also don't believe in? And I just want to start by saying that 
your nervous system does not have to be rational. It does not have to make mm-hmm, sense. Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. things that f- scare right. you and upset you, they can be as stupid as a book falling off of a shelf. Your nervous system mm-hmm. does not need to be argued with or debated with. And I, I stress mm. that because I feel like we so often experience, I have this fear, I have this pain, and that sucks. Mm-hmm. And then we make it worse right. by saying, I shouldn't have this fear, I shouldn't have this pain. Mm-hmm. And we're doubling down on the exp- pa- the painful experiences that we have. We make that distress worse by being distressed over what should be happening, what mm-hmm. we think ought to be Mm -hmm. happening and in that way lies madness so i I would encourage you to really just begin with accepting the fact that while this can change while this certainly will change that right now it Mm -hmm. is and there's no point in debating that there's no point in denying that or arguing with that right now you are struggling with some of this distress and as much as that sucks that is okay And I I think that Mm -hmm. there's value in trying to analyze it and organize yourself, maybe trying to argue with some of the irrationality here. But it sounds like you've done that, that you've taken that intellectual approach in a great many ways. And while I don't want to dismiss any of that because it's powerful, it may not be the only approach. And you might be looking for ways Mm -hmm. to address some of the emotional hurts here. That might mean Mm -hmm. evaluating or investigating like, when was I most afraid of hell? What was my experience of the concept of hell as a child? You know, this part of me that feels really hurt and injured, maybe it's this immature part of myself because I, was, uh, I encountered these ideas when I was six years old and it terrified me to be a child. And so when you're trying to come with all of this adult logic and fix this feeling the feeling's not going to be fixed because the part of you that's feeling it is stuck in that age of being six or or whatever it might be for you. So that's kind of a a broad overview. Certainly there are other resources and other things to Mm. explore, but I want to hear how all of that is uh, landing for you. How does that feel? So, um, yeah, the the rational part is is all there. And I think that, um, so like my family, we didn't, we, we didn't grow up religious. Um, we were kind of like, we had the like blanket belief, you know, God exists and Jesus is real and all that stuff. And, um, I started re- reading the Bible because I had a very religious, um, relative. And then that's kind of when like I started for lack of a better way, indoctrinating myself, you know? Mm-hmm, sure. But, but, um, and, so like, and it, it's funny too, because like, like when I, when I talk to my, my siblings, they're like, yeah, we used to call up church boy. I used to be in church every, you know, like every, uh, you know, week and stuff like that. And what I was really looking for was community because I was this fat kid, nerdy with glasses, you know, sure. and church kind of had that community for me. And, and, and so like, when 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 I got out of conservative Christianity over to liberal Christianity, I was kind of like, well, and bringing some of those conservative ideas with me, like the inerrancy of the Bible and like everything in the Bible is there for a reason, you know, like that also kind of, in a way, even though I like the social just, justice aspect of it and the um, and really making a difference in the world for the better and using religion as a tool for that. Um, I still came away thinking, well, there are some things that the liberal Christianity believes that isn't biblical. And then even then, like it, it, it got to a point where I'm thinking, y'all believe in the same book. And if you're really going to talk about biblical stuff, like everybody is a contradiction. Sure. Yeah. So mm-hmm. then, um, then about, about the, the hell part, it's, like I, I felt like I discarded that when I when I went to liberal Christianity, but it was still in that like, well, you know what? If what I thought was re- was real, back like in like conservatopia, and I'm bringing it over to liberalia, you know, what if liberalia is, is like going to hell because of what I learned in conservatopia? You know, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. You you may not be able to reason yourself out of these feelings, and, mm-hmm. and that's okay. Yeah. 
You know, I, yeah. it's always mm-hmm. good to challenge our mal- our magical thinking. It's always good to sort of bring in more rationality. But you're working mm-hmm. to address an emotional issue, and uh, facts mm-hmm. and logic may not answer right. those questions for you. And that's okay. You might ask okay. yourself, what yeah. is it about this that is so scary to me? Is it uh, mm-hmm. fear that I feel? Is it actually guilt that I feel? Is the fear uh, a th- worry about what's going to happen to me for all of eternity Mm -hmm. or am I really afraid Mm -hmm. that maybe I've betrayed some part of myself, that I've betrayed my family Mm -hmm. or the beliefs that used to be so important to me. I mean, I I certainly don't want to try and psychoanalyze all of these ideas with you live on air but I would encourage you to Mm -hmm. be asking some good questions, to be exploring some good resources uh, in addition to all of the videos that the ACA has done to address this question. I love to direct people to a wonderful book called uh, Leaving the Fold by Marlene Winnell, as well as the great resources at an organization like uh, Recovering from Religion. Uh, Jamie, anything else that, that you might want to add before well, we move on? I can I can only add things from my personal experience, which, which might be helpful here. Um, and then I, one of the things that helped me move past things that would haunt me from my past is recognizing just again and again thinking them through and and doubting them right like uh there's the there's hell but there is also a fear that my high school drama teacher was gonna uh call on me and i didn't have my lines memorized right from years ago right years ago i was in high school i'm not anymore as you might have guessed um (laughs) Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, the, Mr. Clausia's voice is still ringing in my ears, and it lives there rent-free because, yeah. Right. But I, I, moving past that and remembering, like, okay, it's in the past. And then the, the point that, that Christy touched on that I would emphasize as much as I can from my non-expert position is get rid of the word should. You decide what you should mm-hmm. be and forgive yourself for feeling those feelings. Because they're hurting you, and you don't want them to, and they don't have to. There's no need to shoot all over yourself, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> don't, Thank yeah. You. Yeah, there's nothing that you should feel. And there's just what you do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. And we're, well, we're um, here for I you in, wanna... in spirit. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, and just a parting word, though. Like, it just, just dawned on me, though. Famous Ben Shapiro quote, facts don't care about your feelings. Well, mm-hmm. the inverse tends to be true. Feelings don't care about our facts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, fair to say. Know, yeah. It's an yeah. interesting thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we uh, we appreciate you giving us a call. Best of luck in all of this. I hope you'll explore some of those resources and uh, give us a call in the future. Even shoot us an email if there's anything else we can walk you through. Uh, for now, we appreciate you and hope you have a great weekend. All right, thank you. Okay, we've got uh, we've got actually a bunch of good calls and a bunch of super chats. Uh, where mm-hmm. do you want to go next? What do you want to start with? Well, uh, let's do some more super chats. Yeah, hit me. They're they're building up. Okay, so oh sure, I see this. Okay, so Fem Love Bond, uh, who's a member for a couple of months now, uh, is donating to uh, funding to investigate ant origins. Is <laughs> small. Um, and Quantum Answer, who's mem- been a member for a couple of years now, uh, gifted 20, the, the atheist, exp- oh, he's gifted 20 atheist experience memberships. Hey, all yeah. right. Come join the club. <laughs> I, uh, I love this from Miranda Rensberger, uh, who donates $5, saying, hey, God, Oli Oli Oxen free. You can show yourself already. Yeah. And then let's see, we've got Lenway Silverweb. When the universe was made from nothing, it was truly a big bang for your buck. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, I didn't pay for it. Uh, so. And you know what, Jamie? I can't read oh, this last one. Yes. This is all you. <clears throat> this is all you, friend. All right. Super Chat from X Million has given $10. For Jamie's sake, I just want to hear you say, distended vein-laden meat pipes with swollen purple heads. 
Somebody is going to be clipping that for oh, later. That, yes. That'll that come I up. I threw in the eyebrows, yeah. Eyebrows, this eyebrows? Is, this is going to be the first episode that my boyfriend sees. hey so oh gonna, yeah. It's be so that'll, that'll be a yes. fun conversation yes. later. Uh, yeah. let's, uh, let's jump into a conversation, though, with uh, John in Canada, who wants to talk about the Ten Commandments. John, what can you tell us? How many are there? No, man. I, no. Ten. <laughs> okay. I can list them all for you. However, I will tell you that the Ten Commandments are the ultimate proof because they're out, because they're absolutely necessary for society to function. Uh, I would push back on that, but let's get really to the meat of your claim. Uh, is it true that you believe that the Ten Commandments prove the existence of, I'm assuming, the Christian Abrahamic God? Is that your claim? Yes. Okay. Uh, how do you know? What makes you believe that? What can yeah. you tell us? As they work. That the, the entire Western civilization was based on a gentleman. I oh, no, oh, we already have one gigantic make, claim uh, make, when you say that they work. Make. The notion that all of Western civilization was based on them uh, is just not true, and I don't even want to really waste a lot of time with it. Let's talk about why you think the Ten Commandments work. What does it mean for a list of laws to work. Does that mean that we see social cohesion? Does that mean that we see a very small or limited or non-existent amount of uh, social distress? Did the Ten Commandments eradicate things like rape and murder and slavery and other social ills? What does it mean for the Ten Commandments to work? Ten Commandments do work because they did, it did eliminate slavery. Because of, because of Ten Commandments... Slavery the Ten Commandments slavery. eradicated slavery? Yeah. They literally and, don't. And also, they very they much do not. not. And uh, slavery lasted for quite a long time after the Ten Commandments were written. Uh, even if we grant you that uh, Moses and or Charlton Heston carried down some 15, I mean 10 uh, commandments from the mountaintop, all of that would have happened quite a few thousand years before slavery was eradicated in the United States, uh, and slavery hasn't even been sufficiently eradicated in the United States, let alone around the world. Yeah. How can you tell me that the Ten Commandments eradicated slavery? What do you mean? Because, think about it, gentlemen, Abraham Lincoln and the soldiers of the Union forces were Christians, and using the, the Bible, so was every, so were the so was every son of Dixie. So was every son of Dixie, and their argument for the continuation of slavery in the United States was based on the Bible. Was that black people were the descendants of Ham? In case you haven't noticed, but black people are free in the United States. You should be. You're yes, be I'm. I'm very glad so that they are. I'm not arguing. Let me make yes. that clear. I'm not arguing in favor of slavery. I'm just pointing out that slavery did not become illegal in the United States because it says in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not own slaves. It doesn't say that in the Ten Commandments. It doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible. In fact, it provides the proper conditions under which you may own and punish your slaves. If, gentlemen, if, if, if the Bible didn't exist, the Civil War never would have been fought, and the slavery would still exist in your country. That's my proof. Well, I mean, if I, the Bible if, if didn't, didn't exist, exist we, a the, lot the, of things would be, would be very, be, very different. It would be a very alternate history. Who knows whether a non-Christian Europe would have uh, traveled across the sea to... Uh, capture land in the way that it did. We're, we're into a very alternate history at that point. Yeah, uh, John, I, I would love for you to take another big swing and maybe give us something to jump into, yeah. but if we're just going to kind of bat around these, Here. like, really, really Maybe ridiculous really ideas. Uh, we have some wonderful callers on the line I'd love to talk to. Uh, so, John, uh, let me give you uh, one you more you, chance you, 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 to you, to really wow me guys? with a, a, a provable or at least well-argued uh, idea. You always, you guys are always doubting colonialism that never should have happened, but you're living under colonialism. The United States wouldn't exist if it was if it didn't Who exist. brought up Why colonialism, get? John? What, I mean, what are I we doing here? I referred to it briefly in my explanation. So, John, let, let me see if I can redirect this call back to, to what your point was, was that the Ten Commandments work and presumably a society can't exist without them, right? Without being based on them. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Does society exist in the Eastern world? 
Because you said that it's the basis Sorry? of Western civilization. Do you believe that the Bible was it the is. basis of Eastern civilization? Pardon me? Eastern civilization, China. Every, it, Christianity exists everywhere, gentlemen. It, it does, everywhere. but is Christianity, were the Ten Commandments the basis for Chinese society? Christianity exists everywhere. That's on my, my point. Even if it's not exactly okay. one. Okay, so I think, it's, it's, I think the existence of China, even before the introduction of Christianity and its success in civilization terms before then, demonstrates that a civilization can form without the Ten Commandments. Yes, it, it's impossible to have any kind of commandments without society. You guys are trying to get rid of it. But you need rules well, and regulations. Okay, I'm, I'm not trying to eliminate the concept of rules and regulations. Um, I'm just trying to have a conversation about whether or not having the Ten Commandments as the foundation for a society is necessary. And whether or not that therefore means that the Abrahamic God is Yahweh, God, no other gods before him. Because I think you can see if you look to the East, you can found societies on Confucian ethics without reference to an external divine Abrahamic God. If, if, uh, gentlemen, you don't want to live in China because it's a communist state. I don't the want to live in China. That's, that's correct. But a con the basis of Chinese civilization was also not based on communism initially. Yes, it was. Well, it was initially Confucian ethics, and, and before Mao and the communist revolution, it wasn't communist. It is now. Now I'm right there with you. China is a communist country, asterisk for all of my... Uh, communist friends that are going to say, no, it doesn't count because it's not working or whatever. Um, but no, I don't want to live in, in communist China. But I would like to point out that the basis of China, even before it was communist, was not the Ten Commandments. Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was the Europeans who brought civilization. The Europeans who brought the Ten Commandments civilization. I'm sorry, the just to be clear, Sorry. there wasn't civilization in... Are, are, it, am I understanding you correctly? in that you are saying that civilization didn't exist in China before Europeans brought it. Is that what you're saying? It, it existed, but it wasn't as good as it was before. Okay, so... The very country that you're living in was, was made better by Europeans. Okay, but... That's exactly what happened. Before that, there was... I think there's some First Nation people that might quibble over the word better, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but without oh, yeah. really getting into I all of that... I was saying that China we, was made better by European... Uh, uh, you said the very person. nation we're living in, the but I'll tell you what, uh, okay. Jamie, we have some really lovely yeah, calls in the queues calls. that I'm just chomping would, at the bit for. Do John, you want to stay here? Um, uh, well, I think we should give them all their fair shake. Uh, John, I would love for you to call back in and for us to have a conversation about the, the history of civilization uh, around the world as it relates to um, Christians uh, traveling to various places and uh, affecting... And the betterment of those societies for and, having yes, had those and experiences and, and of, how universal yes. that idea is and in no way controversial or disprovable. Yes. That might be something to investigate just a little bit there, John. But we do appreciate your yeah. uh, your, your kindness in having these That's conversations. True. We do appreciate you watching and listening. Yeah. Uh, and keep reading, keep thinking. Maybe put it in an email. I would love to maybe have yeah. this discussion with with you in that way uh yeah and no no animosity to you as an individual mm -hmm. although uh although maybe some of those ideas uh should be yeah, no, no, no. are not uh, well, play, play, yeah. Little, so, yeah so the, the the in chinese history the century of shame is perhaps not the best example of positive cultural influence. We need to go to another call. Yeah, we got some great uh, folks on the line. Uh, do you have a, do you have a favorite that you want to pick out here? I don't know. Oh, my brain immediately went to favorite example of Christians showing up in wrecking shit. Nope, yeah. nope, I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to let uh, you pick the so, next one. So, oh, I want to talk to Katie uh, in the Dutch Oklahoma. in the Congo were Christian as well. Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There. Icing. Kate, uh, done. Katie, uh, what is uh, on your mind today? Hi. Okay. Wow. I, I wasn't expecting y'all to actually pick up me. Thanks. Hope y'all are having a good day. Um, we are. It's great. Yeah. I'm in a weird point in a whole bunch of things, but 
I was watching last week's ASP, mm-hmm. AXP and then Talk Heathen and I've, I've been watching the channel for a bit now and periodically think on things, but I'm certain to have some particularly strong feels and I'm trying to determine if I actually have religious trauma or if it's just like a secondhand trauma kind of thing or if it's just certain memories being wrapped up in an other traumatic situation because sure. mm. things are striking out, but I can't tell if it's like when I was relating hard to non-binary or neurodivergent things where it was like, oh, that explains a lot, or if it's just like how I can relate to lesbians' experiences since I am a queer your AFAB person who's been mm. raised in a very heteronormative culture. Sure. So there's mm. some overlap but I'm not in that category. Mm. Yeah, let me okay. see if I can do anything to sort of demystify things here. And I, I want to be really careful about uh, the elasticity of some of these words. And I know I may get some pushback on some of this, but I just want to express broadly that the term trauma is not something that we need to gatekeep. It's not something that we need to be overly concerned with uh, in our application of it. Like, certainly, if I were to be hit in the head with a baseball bat and then go into an ER, we might describe that as a blunt force trauma. Uh, at the same time, if I were to, you know, drop something on my toe and go, ooh, ow, that's smart, and then keep on walking, that can still be described as trauma. You know, when we're talking about our mental health and we're discussing trauma, I think we want to take the same approach. That's not to suggest that we can open up the DSM-5 and say that, well, you meet clinical levels of post-traumatic stress disorder because that is a much more specific uh, bar and a different way of describing things. But I would suggest broadly that if you exist in a religious society that you have had some cuts and scrapes, maybe some uh, psychological paper cuts that are go- that we can describe as psychological trauma. And I really don't want to be overly careful in guarding that word. Now, your trauma, is it religious in nature? Could it be described as religious trauma? Well, we don't even need to worry about what like the DSM has to say about that because the DSM doesn't address religious trauma specifically. Uh, this is a rather new concept. We're still developing research on this subject. Uh, there have been exploratory committees investigating whether or not religious trauma ought to be differentiated from other forms of trauma. And that's an ongoing discussion and there's debate within the field and perhaps we'll see future revisions that do differentiate between uh, social traumas and uh, like chronic traumas and uh, all of these different kinds of things. But none of that needs to have anything to do with you yourself, Katie. If you are struggling with identity acceptance because you live in a religious society that doesn't accept your identity, we can call that religious trauma or we can just call it damn shit, ouch, that hurts. And that's what I would maybe encourage you to do. If something hurts, it's worth doing something about. And whatever that healing might look like, there are so many different avenues and options. But I I just want to say, if you're in pain, you're allowed to do something about it, regardless of what we call it. How does that land for you? I mean, you're going to make me cry, but yeah, that's... Mm. Yeah, that is... An understanding of trauma that has taken me into my mid-30s to gain, just with life in general, Mm -hmm. and with various experiences and situations in my life throughout, I not really ever thought of myself as having religious, I mean, didn't know the term religious trauma until watching AXP, but Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of myself as potentially having it until today. I wasn't raised to be religious, or if I was, it didn't take. Mm -hmm. But there was a period of time where I was required to go to church, despite knowing that I was not even slightly religious Mm -hmm. and wanted nothing to do with it. And I 
it was kind of like being shoved in the clo- in the closet. Sure. I mean, that experience of having to uh, alienate yourself, having to pretend to believe in something that you don't believe in, that separation in your sincerity. Quietly wear a mask of letting people assume whatever they want because, you know, it's dangerous. Yeah. Actually, be honest. That can be incredibly traumatizing. And whether we use the word incredible or mild or, or whatever else, we really don't need to weigh and measure and evaluate these things. There's no quota. Right. Like if you uh, cut your finger, it doesn't matter if it's tiny paper cut. If it hurts, you go, ow, that hurts. If it's bleeding, you get a Band-Aid. If the pain is sufficient that you need to go to an ER, that you need stitches, like address the pain on its own sake, on its own level. You really don't need to apologize or justify, oh, well, it shouldn't be that bad. If it hurts, it hurts, and you're allowed to have compassion towards it. You're allowed to do something about it. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, I can hear what you're feeling in your... Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, sometimes words are difficult. Yeah, sometimes, they, yes, and... He's right. If it's not just a flesh wound, it's not just a flesh wound. Was the joke that I would try and work in because when things get heavy, I always try and find a joke for them. And it's been into the later years of my life, uh, actually dealing with some of the things uh, from childhood and younger that are deeply affecting. Luckily, uh, on my end, it's less religious trauma and more other shit. But yeah, just know you're you're not alone. Which sucks just as much. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's also not just a flesh wound. <laughs> but yeah, you you No, should, not at you all. You should know whatever the label is because I've had people talk to me and be like, "Oh, I think you're this or that or the other." And uh whatever label ends up applying to me under our current diagnostic schema, I know that this is me and uh, I know what I feel. And I I hope that you find that clarity for yourself as well. Mhm. Whatever, whatever word or language you use to describe it. The, the last thing I'll just kind of shoehorn in here, Katie, is that uh, for mm-hmm. many of us, for most of us, uh, religious trauma can be sort of differentiated by the social component of it. Uh, the fact that it is coming from a belief system that is held by people around us, that our community participated in that trauma in a lot of ways or negated or denied the significance of that trauma. Uh, Religious trauma just so often has this social component to it that can be incredibly invalidating. It's not just that I had this moral injury. It's not just that I was humiliated in front of my community. It's that so many people in my community stood there and said, yeah, you should feel ashamed. You should feel awful. And I would only ask that you not re-traumatize yourself by invalidating or diminishing your own pain. If it hurts, it hurts. You don't have to justify it. You don't have to be able to explain why it hurts. You don't have to be able to say, well, the car accident wasn't actually that bad. We have all heard stories of somebody who like flies through the windshield of the car and hits the grass and rolls away without a scratch on them. And I know that if I stop at a stop sign too fast, I can get whiplash in my neck. The trauma is not about the fall. It's about the landing. And if it hurts, don't invalidate that hurt. Yeah, know that all that very perfectly articulates what I was starting to feel. So, Mm. and then the going into trauma specifically, yeah. Yeah, sometimes life can predispose you to having that I can sleep when I'm dead kind of attitude because mm. that's the only rest you get. <laughs> yeah, I hear it's that. True. I hear yeah. that. Uh, just to say, you don't have to change anything. You don't have to fix any of this, but you certainly can. So there's no quota. There's no rush. But if you're feeling distress, if you're feeling pain, 
please feel empowered to do something about that pain. We've mentioned some different resources already. I know that there will be resources available in the chat, uh, but let me just say you're allowed to put effort into healing and to taking care of yourself. And a uh, well-informed secular therapist, a religious trauma therapist can be a really powerful part of that. Uh, there are a number of great books, podcasts, resources, don't feel like you have to fix this ever. Don't feel like you have to rush into fixing this today or tomorrow, but do know that you're going to change anyway. And so if you want to direct that change and grow towards healing, there are so many things to help you do that. And we, we certainly hope to see you feeling better and, and really appreciate you being vulnerable and, and sharing all of this with us this mor this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for that. I mean, just, being able to put a name on it, for me at least, does help. Yeah, name it and to tame it. I, it's cheesy but powerful. Yeah, and I will not right this second, this is not the time, but yeah, just being able to put a name on it helps to have a path to deal with it, mm -hmm. or at least mm -hmm. a framework to look at it through when I'm thinking on it, when it resurfaces in my brain, in whatever way. Yeah, well, glad to hear it. Uh, journeyfree.org is one last thing I want to make sure to throw out there. Uh, that's a website maintained by the person who actually coined the phrase religious trauma syndrome and has been a, a big part of that push. If you want to explore that idea more, that would be at least one place to start. Uh, thank you so much for your call and for your openness and vulnerability with us, and we hope that you'll take good care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you both all so very much, and all y'all keep up the good work. Absolutely. Take care. Yeah. yeah. All right. A lot, well, of, lot of love and hearts in the chat for this caller, yeah? I know, yeah. A lot of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got some great ones here. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're go over just time. going over time, over but let's time. keep going. Who do you want to talk to? Let's take Barry from Georgia. Barry in Georgia, what is on your mind today? Sup, dog? Hi, guys. How you doing? Howdy. Can you hear me? Marvelous. Yeah, please. Yes. Hey. All right. Well, I was on your chat, you know, on YouTube, and mm -hmm. I was making a few comments about my beliefs, and um, I got bombarded a little bit, and then... Um, some people were chatting, saying, well, if you feel that strong about it, call in. Right. I'm like, well, I don't want to go through the same thing I just experienced on the chat group, but okay, I'll give it a try. All right, yeah. well, here well, we are. Uh, yeah. Tell us about the your belief in God and uh, I guess what your basis for that is. Yeah. And sorry if you felt bombarded. We'll do our best not to make you feel the same way, but, you know, well, we're probably not going to agree. Initially, well... <laughs> I don't expect you to agree. Yeah. But then again, I, I went on to the YouTube just to see what it was about, first of all. Well, come on. And then, of course, said, okay, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the question was about faith. You know, when I was asked, what do I believe? I was told, told I told, I wrote that faith is the baseline for believing. Mm -hmm. If you can't have faith, that you don't have much substance into believing about God, sure. His Son, yeah, okay. Christianity in general. Faith is paramount. Yeah, and so, and where does faith come from? Is that from hearing and from hearing the Word of God? Is there another way of understanding the source of faith? No, no, no. Nope, you had it. Okay, it's in Romans ten, chapter ten, verse seventeen. Mm -hmm. So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word of God, okay? Mm -hmm. So, there's some poignant words there. There's some words that really will, if you believe, if you have faith, you know, it will jump out at you. Hearing, first of all. So then faith comes by hearing. You have to be able to hear it. Mm -hmm. And hearing, you have to be able to hear the Word of God. And you ask me, where does it come from? It comes from my heart. I open my heart to the Word of God. Now, I'm an older guy. I'm 67. Mm -hmm. I wasn't always a believer, but I knew God was a part of my life. I knew that I put it off. I didn't want to accept it. I guess I wanted to have him 
on the back burner. I didn't want to have him have such an influence in my life. I didn't know where he would lead me if I did. So, okay, so you, that was what I wanted. To, you you right. believed in God your whole life, but he wasn't as prominent a part of your life until you presumably read the Word of God and, and felt a deeper connection with him. Am I am I understanding you correctly? Yes, it didn't. It wasn't just one reading. It wasn't like a you know that. It was okay. more about reading and understanding the word, what I was reading, and how the words spoke to me. Now, of course, I prayed about some of this. I mean, I would ask you know God to help me understand some of this. I mean, I don't. I'd read it, but I didn't understand it. Not as deeply as I do, well now. Because the words mean more to me now. I mean, just let me give an example. In the very beginning, in Genesis, we know that God, well, there's the story of God creating the earth and creating the heavens. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, it's, it's, in the there, it's in there a couple Life. times, yeah. Yeah, and creating man. And if you really look at what God did when he breathed the breath of life, those three words, breathe breath life into man to me that jumped out at me god okay. breathe so there's something breath. about the 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 for lack of a for lack of a better word and i don't mean respect to, to be disrespectful there's something about the poetry of that phrase that spoke to you well and, and it sounds poetry. like intuition or uh, the spirit moving Truth. within you like that there's something about the emotional response to god's word that is tied to faith not not, not the emotional response what kind of response? No. When you say it jumps out at you, what does that mean if there's not a emotional component? And and to be really clear, I talk about feelings for a living, so I'm not saying, like, feelings, bad, logic, good. That, that's not my <laughs> stance, but Sorry. but just to clear yeah. the table a little yeah. bit there. Sorry, Hear, hearing Christy say feelings bad is hilarious. <laughs> um, no, no, we're, we're, well, when, we're trying to understand. When you, when you yeah. say that, I, mm -hmm. I think of Spock. You know, Spock oh, is it, logical on Star Trek. But the words, let me explain. The words, no, it's not emotional. It's what I feel that's something I learned, we learned, you learned, I'm sure, about is there existence of God or did evolution, all right? I wasn't taught evolution. I was taught creation. So reading those words let me believe that this is what happened with the creation of man. This, is, this makes sense to me, not evolution. Anyway, have it doesn't you read make the sense origin of... stories provided by other faiths? Other faiths? Yeah, like well, so when... there's there's the creation story in the Bible, but there's also the the Quran and the Bhagavad Gita and other other sacred texts. I, I, I don't know that. Okay. I don't get into Buddha. I don't. Here's one of the things. <laughs> when I was in the military, I went into Los Angeles Airport. And I was in my uniform. A girl comes up to me. She acted like she knew me. And she wanted to sell me a Hindu Bible. Mm. Right? Oh, and okay. just kind of appeased a little bit. Well, I, that was a long time ago. I was back in 1976. Right. But I think it was a Hindu Bible. Or maybe and, it is. Um, yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I gave her $2, right? And I opened it up, first two pages. I threw it in the closest garbage can. Okay. I mean... I know it doesn't make sense. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So have, so, you, have you have you read about uh, evolution? I know of evolution. I don't read about it. I haven't read about it. No. Well, I mean, you you I knew don't... about Christianity before you read those words, but you didn't feel that it had moved you until you read "God breathed the breath of life." Sorry, I'm par. I've, I'm now misquoting the Bible. But um, have you read? Uh, well, a similarly uh, poetic description no. of uh, no. the the okay. Would you be interested in that? No. Why not? Why would I be interested? Because I believe that that's the way God created man. Yeah, but you believe that by your own admission because you read it. And I might challenge you, if you had been reading a different book or perhaps born at a different time or in a different nation or to a different family. That, yeah. 
you're giving, now you're giving generalities. No, I, I well, was on so board at times. So let me go back to my youth. Now, wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. Give me a chance okay. here. All right. All go right. back to my all youth right. and what I talked well, about I, earlier. I actually don't know that I do want to give you a minute. Uh, we're close yeah. to the end yeah. of the show. I don't mean to be rude yeah. or difficult, but, but your personal but, anecdotes but, are... Uh, the, the, the thing that we're bumping into, uh, Barry, is that we're, we're looking for a reason to believe. And the reasons that you've offered could be offered by a faithful Muslim or a Buddhist or a Hindu no. or a Christian or, or a Jewish person. And so no. how... Here, Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Here's another one I'll give you on faith. I, got, I can't help it, guys. It's all about faith. I know. If but, you don't have faith... Yes, but you okay, have now faith, faith is, and it's directed towards this particular book. And I'm wondering, is that supposed to persuade me to have faith directed towards that particular book? Or is that you, no, no, no. Here, here, here. Look, 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 look. I can't persuade you to do anything. I can't persuade you to to believe what I'm telling you or not believe what I'm telling you. I was like that at one time myself when people tried to convince me of certain things about the Bible. That's why I avoided it. Hebrews 11, um, chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things evidence not seen. I don't see these things. I believe these things. I believe these things that the Bible is telling me. That's is there faith. any faith. other part of your life that you use that standard for? Uh, when you are paying your bills, when you are going out on a date or interacting with your family or doing uh, your, your work when you're, you know, working your profession, is that how you operate? Okay. You mean it's or is this a, is this a form of uh, belief, a form of connection, a form of directed behavior that only exists in the realm of the religious? I don't quite understand all of that. That sounds like something psychological. Well, what what Christy is asking is, you use this method of you use faith for the Bible, but you don't use it for anything else. Presumably, I use faith for paying my bills. Yes, I believe I'll have the money in my account when I go to pay my bills. But I thank God for that money in my my account. And you don't ever independently verify how much money is in your account. You <laughs> never get out a calculator or ask the computer in your online banking system to demonstrate how much money is in your account. Oh. I have to check my... Now, come on. You, I've you, got you a take a brisket sure. out of the oven based on faith, yeah, or do you, do you the check heat. the temperature? These are the same kinds of comments I was on your chat room. You're, you're getting into these... If well, everybody else is coming to the same conclusion I mean, that's different from your conclusion, it might be worth questioning your conclusion. I'm just telling you what it is. It's faith. That's all I'm telling you. Yes. That's all I'm but, telling you. But what we're, we're pointing out is that you use faith for this one thing and not for anything else. I use it for my belief in the Bible yes. and what God is telling me in the Bible. And what I, what we're pointing out is that... For other things, I use, I have a mind, I use reasoning for other things. Yeah. I know well, not to cross the road when a car is coming. So I don't why say, don't well, you God's use gonna reasoning in order to find God? Because faith is what led me to God, not reasoning. A reasoning okay. to know but that why, God is it, telling me. Yes, but why can't reasoning, you use no, reasoning to find God? Pardon? Why, why can't you use reason to find God? It, it start, I did use reasoning as a young man, as a young child. I and did it use didn't work, right? Well, did, did, I didn't accept it fully. No, 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 no. I didn't accept it. Okay. I didn't accept it all. Okay. I mean, it, this isn't something you can, I'm not a Billy Graham. I mean, some of these people, you know, listen, Christianity is, is about something here. Listen, it's about falling and getting up and falling and getting up. And eventually you're going to fall and get up and with the Lord's blessing, you'll make it to heaven. Right. I mean, it isn't about I'm not sure what how, I, how I understand that. I feel like falling and getting up and falling and getting up in that way is, is I, I, it, it's an encouraging message and uh, the, the end of it with a Christian flair, but you could have that encouraging message. You'll fall down many times in your life 
and uh, you'll have yep. the strength to get back up. I, I can take that message on board without saying, and therefore with the grace of God at the end of it. Mm-hmm. Well, with the grace of God, I will have that faith. I mean, it's not going to, at, the, at my age now, I don't think it's ever going to diminish. I'm not going to let anybody, not, not, not anybody, but I'm not going to let circumstances derail me from that. And, you know, things can happen. Yeah, I mean, oh, we, yeah. I, I, I mean, hear that you have faith. I feel like I have a fairly strong understanding of what you mean by that. Yeah, uh, And I, I think I just have to echo what Jamie said about how interesting it is that you would use reason in every other part of your life, but this part of your life even as you're surrounded by other people saying, hey, maybe maybe investigate, maybe bring some insight, maybe use some reason and rationality in your uh, thinking, and you're saying, no, I, I can't, I won't, that kind of magical thinking is common to all humans, but we usually don't tend to lean into it because it rarely leads us anywhere useful. I don't want to be disrespectful, but I feel like I understand what you have to say. And, uh, Jamie, I suppose I'll say this. I can already smell the pizza wafting in it's from true. the kitchen. It's me hungry. We've got uh, I will, two I will other ask, lovely callers on the line. Is I, there more you I want to do have here? one more question for Barry because I'm, I'm sure. curious. So, Barry, you've said that you have uh, faith and that it directs you in this way. And that, you know, at your age, you're not going to let circumstances derail that. If you met someone who had faith in a different God, um, and they said, I'm not going to let my faith in the flying spaghetti monster be derailed, right, for example, what would you say to that person? What would I say to what person about a per- what? A person that says, I, I, a person hypothetically that says, I have faith, I have faith in the flying spaghetti monster, I've been touched by his noodly appendage, and uh, one day I will go to the Pastafarian heaven that has a beer volcano and a stripper factory and all these details, and I'm not going to let uh, circumstances derail me from my faith in this. What would you say to them? Oh, or, or about come that on now! This is so, so ludicrous in its own contest. Well, okay. Let me ask you something. So, so I'm Do sorry. I'll, I'll, let me let me I, rephrase I it. Let me rephrase it because I don't because I don't want to make it disrespectful. So, ima- forget that I said the flying spaghetti monster. Imagine that someone says, "I have faith. I have faith in Allah, and that one day I will uh, uh, live in paradise, and I won't let circumstances derail me from my faith." Look, but it's a but it's a different <laughs> God. And I'm I'm just curious. What is your what's your thoughts on that? Okay, look. All right, in a hypothetical situation, someone come to me and they told me what you just said. In that, in that kind of context, I would let's say, do you really want to know what I think? I would tell them. I'm, I would tell them you're being misled. I'm going to tell them that you need to understand that God loves you, and He has nothing but good intentions for you. And if okay. you would just give Him a chance to let Him into your heart you'll begin to understand more about the Lord and what he has in your future. Okay. That's what I would tell him. Okay. I, I, I understand that. And, you know, I, I, I want to make it clear that I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just, you know, I, I didn't know what the answer was until you gave it. Um, I, my, my sort of parting uh, a comment, because I think we're either going to get pizza or our last two, actually we've got <laughs> at least another caller that we want to get through. Um, and man, that pizza smells good. <laughs> right. Sorry. Sorry. Um, is that if in response to your statement, he said, okay, well, do you want to hear what I have to say? And it echoed what you said about, well, if you open your heart to his religion and to his God, that it will guide you. It's, it's, I, I don't know. I think it's just interesting food for thought. That would be hard for me to accept, and I would have to politely refuse it. I hear that, I and I that. and I think that that's where you're at right now, and that's an okay place to be. Yeah, but it may not be serving you, and I would encourage you to have some curiosity, uh, to see nothing is settled, and to always be wondering about the possibilities of life. I, I do appreciate you being, you know, respectful and, and trusting yeah. in walking us through this. I get that you have had a lot of people sort of 
pushing against some really emotionally significant topics today. So take good care of yourself. See what you can't maybe let in, at least out of curiosity and as a way of investigation. And, uh, and please enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your pizza. Hey, you too. take care. Have a good one, Barry. Okay, well... I have to read this super chat because of the uh, excellent investigative work that our team has done to get ready for it. Uh, And I'm going to let you uh, choose which of those calls we're going to uh, jump into. Uh, But so this uh, super chat comes from the queen of the stellar court, uh, $5 stating, Abraham Lincoln was very clear and said if he could end the war without freeing a single slave, he would. He was pro-slavery. Now I'm going to follow up that super chat with some information that our team put together stating that in 1862, uh, Lincoln stated, if I could save the Union without freeing any slaves, I would do it. And then there's a semicolon with a bunch more where he says, and if I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would also do that later stating in another setting, I wish all men everywhere could be freed. Uh, I yeah. think that that is just interesting See, historical context. I really appreciate them putting in the legwork to get us that information. And, and I will say on, on the side of the super chat caller, it meant that his priorities were, number one, saving Save the, the union. union. Sure, yeah. And some number somewhere down uh, in taking steps. Freeing all men. Yeah. yeah. So, they, you know, uh, is that. I think we're going to take... Joseph. Okay. Uh, well, Rainbow Wolf also donated five dollars, saying apologists demand that we change our minds, but are never willing to change theirs. I wonder who that's in response to. Finally, let's that's wrap true. up today by and talking to it's Joseph worth, in Michigan. I was going to say, and it's worth pointing out that Rainbow Wolf used the correct formulation of theirs. So kudos. <laughs> Uh, Joseph, uh, tell us, uh, I think you're bringing the whole conversation uh, full circle, maybe talking about some of these clobber verses. Give us your question. What's on your mind? Um, So the question was, um, what are your thoughts about some of the texts in scripture um, relating to homosexuality um, in Leviticus, Romans, and so forth? Um, that appears to be uh, condemning of gay people. Yeah, so super quickly. Uh, I think that they do condemn gay yeah. people, no, I, and I disagree. Ah. Yeah, I, I want to go through this very, very, very quickly because uh, there are people who will argue and debate that these words don't actually mean that, and they'll kind of jump through some hoops. And there's at least some reason to believe that perhaps, depending on how you read it, maybe the Bible doesn't condemn homosexuality. I don't find that particularly useful or compelling. I think the Bible says pretty clearly that homosexuality is wrong, and I find that to be a big damn problem. Uh, Honestly, it was that issue that led me to challenge my faith, because when I recognized that the Bible said homosexuality was wrong, and then I discovered that homosexuality wasn't a choice, so how could it be wrong? Because God made you that way, but that way is wrong, and that's incorrect. Then, oh, my brain broke, and I had to realize that the Bible could not, in fact, be inerrantly true, that some of these things we've discussed earlier on the show about the Bible having some textual disagreements and some contradictions within itself. Okay, so now we have to interpret the Bible in a non-literal way, and if we're doing that, then why bother reading this particular book in the first place? So, that is all table setting for me. I'm going to let you walk us through some of your ideas. But the other thing I want to say is what I really hit on at the top of the show, which is that the Bible has little, if anything, depending on who you're talking to, to say about homosexuality. And yet we spend so much time talking about those six or seven clobber verses. And I think that that's really interesting because it does go to show that you can take this giant book of ancient poetry and find something that really agrees with the thing that you want to be passionate about. 
and that's problematic for the text as a whole. I think it's also very problematic when you recognize just how much of the discussion around Christianity in America is about homosexuality and how people get so focused on that but we're not talking about, you know, nectarines and our hybrid fruits. We're not talking about our polyester blends and our hybrid materials, both things that the Bible clearly condemns. We talk about how the Bible condemns homosexuality, and I find that to be incredibly problematic and politically uh, a political issue. So I, I apologize, just yeah. that is so much for me. I would love to hear what you think about those verses and why it matters. Wow. That's, um, well, I wanted to hear the perspective of someone who's an atheist. I'm, I'm assuming most atheists typically were religious or a theist of some type at some point in time before they became atheists. Um, and I've never heard that perspective from an atheist before. So because in my thought process is that atheists tend to have a more objective opinion about things. I don't find that they typically are against maybe the ideas of God, but they are against the ideas of scripture. And this particular issue, which I agree, it is, it is um, it, in my opinion, I think is a moral question um, in how a Christian who claims to believe in God, um, how they think, not even so much what they say, but with how they think and feel about gay people according to what they say the Bible says. And I've always taken a position um, that are they, are they really believing that that's what the Bible says and they're just trying to, because they believe that's the word of God? Or is it, is it some sort of a way, a scapegoat in a way, yeah. or prejudices that they have because gay people are a minority, something like 5 or 10% of the entire population. And so it's kind of easy to pick on those who aren't the majority, right? We are the majority, me being a straight person. Um, but also being a black man. So I'm being America. So it's like, I understand from that perspective what a gay person will go through. So it's kind of like, it's just, it seems like it's an easy way to say, well, the Bible says that. And so therefore I feel that. But I also wanted to ask, um, do you think that those who have those strong feelings about the issue um, of homosexuality, because they like, you know, They'll say things like, oh, it's not just the sin of gays. We, we talk about all sins. Uh, um, the first one they typically throw out there is pedophilia. So it's kind of like, that's weird. They, they link sure. gay people to, not, yeah. not, 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 not directly, but they, it's kind of like think about it in the link. same way. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. It, especially and, and since like, I don't in, know that the Bible like, even condemns pedestry. Uh, that that uh, might be something to evaluate a little differently, but regardless, oh, yeah, it's it problematic to, com it. to compare the two. Yeah, I think part of it is, I, for a lot of people, those two things fall into the same category because they're gross sex-related things that are gross to people. And so then, of course, oh, well, yes, well, uh, mm. wow, well, I'm... I, you mentioned earlier someone was going to cut a clip, so now I'm very cautious about the words that I'm about to say. But <laughs> there are many people that are not me that'll say, oh, well, uh, homosexuality and uh, pedophilia are basically the same, aren't they? Um, and it, in a person's mind, if those are both gross sex things that I don't want to be around, then they have that same, you know cognitive category in the mind and so to be quite honest when i hear people say that i yeah I, it's not just problematic it's silly right you can tell the difference Jamie, very easily if you ask if there's a difference between uh, a pedophile and a married man it's like yes the age of the person that that person is sexually attracted to is different and that's the difference but if you uh, have the genders of the people the same, then they put it in the same category of gross and other and all of that. But the Bible, I think, is pretty clear on uh, if a man lies with another man as a man lies with a woman, he's using the wrong position. Um, so uh, there's there's that. Well, when you say, you, you mentioned real quick, you said, um, um, Something that is not someone that's like me or something like that. I mean, do you know someone? Oh, um, um, I think most people. Uh, well, okay. I don't personally 
know anyone, at least that I'm aware of, that thinks that uh, pedophilia and homosexuality are the same. However, uh, that's no, not... No, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry? That's not what I meant. I meant, like, someone, um, someone who is... Um, who is who is gay, um, like who who went through this experience and who and who had to battle with those particular verses in the Bible? Um, oh yeah, no, I'm they... I'm gay. Yeah, yeah. That's why. So, I, that's yeah, why so I, I mean, like, to be oh, honest, curious. I've I've been I've been, I've had more things said. Well, actually, it's kind of a toss up on this show, and then you know, uh, yeah, yeah. There's some I've I've yep. People, actually, I've heard more slurs than Bible quotes about it. Honestly, uh, I guess that's easier for people to think of. Usually, if I'm like, I was walking down the street holding my boyfriend's hand at one point, and it was slurs rather than a reference to Leviticus that was quoted at me. Um, however, you know, mm-hmm. on on the the shows, I've had people call in and say, that, you know, it's against God, and and all of this. And so I've I've had an experience talking to people about that. It's not fun. So how do, they, do how do you feel like they take? Yeah, I figured that. Yeah. I mean, I can only imagine. Yeah. Um, it, it's. I had a conversation. I was doing Uber driving one day, hmm. and I like to ask these. Honestly, that's the reason why I asked the question because I kind of had a sense. I said, I think the guy on the left. <laughs> so I was like, I want to know his perspective. I've heard it from other <laughs> Christians, gay guys, yeah. but I want to hear it from an atheist because it's different. It's just yeah. different, and part of the reason that that I think it's dangerous to not allow. Um, people who are of a different sexual orientation to be, um, to have a voice in the schools because it causes those kids to grow up to have, they don't have the experience in contact with those people if they've only ever seen um, or experienced those who are of a, of a straight nature. Yeah, so sure. Big, it's and, as, and, it's and, as close to, of, to segregating homosexuality out of schools as they can get. It's as close as they can get. Because if you can... Uh, Re- remove a person's exposure to a type of person throughout their youth, then mm. it's easier to make them hate. Right? It's easier to hate a kind of person that you've never met. Right? Than it is. It. Well, well, okay. You know, because you, you kind of see it. And again, I'm I'm white, so I, your experience is different than mine. But you kind of have, as best I can tell levels of people that are racist like there's racist people that go oh well you know i hate all black people but you're one of the good ones right it's still racist but it's harder for them to be racist because they have an example of of a person that isn't that and if you don't let you know a person know that gay people are normal as their gay people are as normal as black people uh then it's easier for them to get ideas of hatred and othering and, and separation. So I think you've got a good point there. And also, I've just said that, something else um, that's going to get cut out of context. So I'm canceled <laughs> tomorrow. That's for sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut across you. What were, what were uh, you saying? Oh no, I thought you were going to add to that. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, um, oh, I was going to ask you. Do you uh, do you do so? Those who lean on the scripture particularly so you mostly get slurs mm-hmm. then i think that's interesting i've never heard that before mm. um, so you don't really get people who like well god says this or it, it, do you feel like they that say they, they'll say yeah that, god says it's wrong but now yeah, or, nowadays or even they like, lean more love on the it. sinner hate the, the sin, sin. You like you know, we want to well. rescue yeah. you from um, like yeah. we love you we yeah. just you know want to yeah. we want you and your friend to maybe change their lifestyle <laughs> like you know they, there are degrees to mm-hmm. all of this uh, as jamie is saying uh, yeah that's interesting Okay. And um, and to a certain so, extent, it is yeah. inevitable if you really do take the Bible at its word. Yeah. Uh, and that's why yeah. these conversations yeah. matter. Like, if it really is just like our, our previous caller saying, well, I have faith in something, and it doesn't make sense, and it doesn't have to make sense. And I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. But if you're going to use that as a justification for the way you vote, if you're going to use that as a justification for the way you donate, for the way you spend money, for the way you treat others, for all of these kinds of things, then, you know, as somebody who cares about people like Jamie, as somebody who has my own questions and concerns, as somebody who cares about our society, our community, 
these things do matter, and I do want to start to ask people to maybe have a more rational worldview and to not just base their belief system off of a bunch of ancient poetry. Wow. Um, I think that what you guys are doing with the, well, I know a lot of uh, Christians or believers will disagree. Sure. But this, in my mind, is something that um, is necessary, having an atheist perspective. It can't be that everyone thinks and believes that, like I do, in God, or someone in Christianity, or someone in um, um, Islam, or Judaism, or whatever religion or belief they have. It has to be someone who is perhaps the opposite of that, to perhaps even offer that voice of reason. Because we can have the perception that we have something to teach you, but what is it that you have to teach us? And to me, in my way, that in a lot of ways is directed by God, if there is a God. Now, I believe in him, um, that there is an existence. But it, it, to me, these questions that you guys ask, very, it's kind of like what made me push away from the Bible, but still believe in sure. God. I said, well, wait a second. It was, the, it was the homosexual question. I said, well, I'm thinking from, just thinking from, I'm putting myself in someone else's shoes. I say, well, I didn't have a choice in me being attracted to, I don't have a choice. I see a woman and I just, well, you know, you get excited and it's like, that's it. There was no thought. That, so I'm thinking, if that happens with me, why would, and I'm asking this, this, um, this um, gay man who was in my Uber, truck, um, Uber car a few weeks ago, I asked him that question. At first he was a little apprehensive. He thought maybe I was gonna harm him. After he figured out that wasn't the case, I was just asking the question similar to what I'm asking Jamie. And he said, he said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, I'm listening. And he said, well, he said, if, if what, if being gay was a choice, why would I choose to go through everything that I went through in my life up to this point for being gay? Wouldn't it be easier for me to choose to be like you straight and to be, to be like all the other boys in school, to like all the girls? Do you think I didn't want that because I knew how much easier that would be? If it was a choice, I would choose that. At the very least, the dating pool would be much yeah, bigger, much you know? Like, yeah. I missed out on a lot of broing out over stuff. Sorry, that's a, that's a weird thing. Yeah. To, but I've, I've, now that I'm older and I've like, I've, now that I'm, like, I'm dating someone who ha he has a PS5, right? And so I'm like, yeah, you know what? I do actually like video games. Maybe it was just a problem with some of the things that people that were around me that had them said. So I missed out on, on you know... A lot of group sports and shit. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's a really interesting uh, perspective. And, you know, kudos to you for having an open mind and an open heart for, for those that are... Well, that came from me having a... I had a best friend when I was, when I was in elementary school. Mm. And this is an age that you don't know. You don't know. You know, all I knew was that, oh, this kid, he's, he kind of acts like one of the girls. But he's yeah. cool with me. And yeah. I didn't... You, you're a kid. You don't have the... Your, your innocence is still there. Yeah. All you know is that he's nice to me. He's he's kind of like he's weird. <laughs> that's the first. That's weird. He's like one of the girls, but he's cool. He's great. Mm -hmm. Then you get older, and then you start to you start to see the schism take place. It's like a, a separation between that that innocence, and then then perhaps even that person who didn't have an issue with it, they began to have an issue with it because of religious texts, and not just mm -hmm. in the Bible, but also with the Quran as well. Especially the Quran. It's probably even worse, um, from what I'm told. So it's 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 a it's a it's a doozy. It's a, it, that kind sure. of what made me question the Bible. It was nothing else. Well, there's a lot of things that made me question it, but it was that. But then people say now I'm kind of like in the middle here. So I say I'm a theist, but then I say, well, I have a lot of things that I believe that's Christian related, but some things that don't make sense. I know Jesus didn't speak. If Jesus were here, would he think and talk the way that Christians talk about gay people? Probably not. In fact, Jesus didn't want the whole Christianity thing being, he didn't want a religion after himself. The whole point was him to take down a whole institution of religion and then it ended up being created anyways after his likeness, which I'm, if he was here, he would not like it. And then you have these prejudices and these, these, um, these fears that people have of gay people. How are you going to populate the earth? And it's like, really, dude, you got, you got, we got overpopulation, the man. <laughs> 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 Also, yeah. that's more populating for you to do. So, right. uh, like, you know, <laughs> what are you complaining about? Here? Uh. Yeah. But, uh, you know, at least in this, Joseph, it's, uh, it's good to have you as an ally uh, pushing back against some of these ideas and just recognizing that what the Bible has to say about people who are gay 
is incredibly, incredibly damning and harmful to a great number of people. We can talk about, you know, the discrimination that you may experience, the slurs and some of the violence and and things like that that happen here in the United States. That is before we even start to scratch the surface on the incredible amounts of oppression that we see in other nations around the world, not to mention the amount of honor killings and just sheer physical violence Mm -hmm. that's experienced in large portions of the world. And so many of those things are tied either directly to the Christian Bible or to other similar forms of faith tradition. And so that's why we do this. That's why Jamie and I show up and have these conversations and explore these ideas and work to try and explain them is to try and prevent that harm. I'm not trying to steal somebody else's belief because I just think it's silly and I want to fix it. It's because I want to participate in creating a better world. And Joseph, if you and I have that in common, you are an ally to us. We are on board with what we're doing and we really appreciate you taking the time to give us a call and just share your experience walk us through your thoughts oh yeah absolutely um i just have one last um i guess statement sure um i appreciate this conversation um it's to me it's just ironic the things you just said in the last statement you made how you're looking to bring peace and love and harmony in the world and you would think (laughs) that with the palestinian war going on with the Christian world going on, with the back and forth bickering going on, you would think that it would be people like you who don't believe in God who are pushing for these things and making these things happen around the world. But the fact is, is that it's those who who are Christians, who are Muslims, who are this, who are that, who hold to some sort of religious faith or even proclaim to believe in a God um, that is doing seemingly the most harm. And that's just objectively looking at what's going on. Uh, and not just question worth world, asking for sure us, but also not that you are. yeah yeah um, well, I, I, I appreciate you seeing that yeah it's a very good point well made all right i think uh-huh. we gotta hop off the line though thank joseph you. so uh thank you for calling in and uh you know i'm sure we'll talk to you again or hear from you again have a great afternoon we appreciate you All right. right. Yeah. Thanks. We got you so much pizza. going on. <laughs> no, uh, we have gone over a lot of big things, uh, and I guess I won't belabor the point by diving any more into it other than to say just once again that these things matter. Yeah. Right? They like, really I, do. I have no desire to mm-hmm. fix the way other people think. I would just yeah. like for them to think and to think, think. rationally with a care and concern the for the well being of others. Yeah. yeah. The care and well being of others. That's Sorry. where my morality Honestly, comes from. Yeah. Not ancient poetry, but from a desire uh, to maintain and encourage the well being of conscious creatures. Yes. That doesn't seem too crazy to me. Yeah, it doesn't. And then it. I, people ask why we do this, oh, and they go to that caricature that you did so expertly a moment ago, wanting to fix it because it's so silly. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Someone on the internet, the internet is wrong! wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's me ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, it, it it's just the harm. It doesn't matter how silly the belief is. If it's damaging, it's damaging. And you can look out at the modern world, and when I do, I don't see any force as powerful or as effective at making parents despise their children as organized religion. Mm, fair to say. Yeah. yeah. Atheist parents don't kick their children out of the house. <laughs> All anyway, right. on that well, light note. <laughs> you know, our, uh, our prompt for this week, if you've forgotten, is missing from the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the blank. Get us your best answer in the comments. Uh, Enjoy the beautiful, amazing, once-in-a-lifetime style experience that's coming in tomorrow's eclipse. And uh, if any of us are still here, we hope that you'll tune in next week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jamie, it's always a pleasure to be working with you here. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here today. And, uh, yeah, go out there, see the eclipse, have a great time. And uh, wear your glasses. Wear your glasses. Don't wear blind your yourself. <laughs> and I suppose I'll say, yeah, thank you so much for being here live in studio.
Otherwise, I'll just tell people to uh, go out and give themselves a big ol' orgasm. Or, better yet, give somebody else one. Thank you all so much. You have a great night. Watch Talk Heathen Live Sundays at 1 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTTH and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call TH.